Welcome to the second video about linear regression. In this video, we have a look at how the method of least squares is used to find the optimal values for the intercept and the slope of a regression line. From the basic lecture about regression, we saw how simple linear regression could be used to estimate the price of a car given a certain age. The regression line can be represented by the following general equation which shows where the line intercepts the y-axis, as well as the slope of the line. The line that fits best to this example data has an intercept of 30.57 and a slope of negative 3.55, which means that the price decreases by 3,550 euros each year. The method of least squares involves the search for optimal values for the intercept and the slope so that the line fits as good as possible to the data. Let's say that we place a line with an intercept of 25 and a slope of negative 2 to the data. Does this line fit better or worse to the data compared to our previous line? To compare how well two lines fit to the data, one can use the method of ordinary least squares, where the line that has the lowest sum of square distances to the data points is considered to fit best to the data. To explain the concept of least squares, we'll use the following example data. The first data point has an x value of 1 and a y value of 2. The second data point has an x value of 1.5 and a y value of 5. The third data point has an x value of 3 and a y value of 5.5. And the last data point has the values 3.5 and 8.5. We now place an arbitrary line to the data with an intercept of 3 and a slope of 2. The method of these squares involves the calculation of the square vertical distances between the line and the data points. In linear regression, the distance between a regression line and the data point is called an error or a residual. In regression analysis, one usually refers to the sum of squared errors or the sum of the squared residuals. To calculate the distance between the data points and the line, we first need to compute the estimated values, which are the values of the line for the corresponding x values of the data points. For example, what is the y value of the line for the corresponding x value for the first data point? If we set x equal to 1 in the equation, and do the math, we see that the estimated value of y according to the line is 3 plus 2 times 1, which is equal to 5. The estimated value of y is therefore 5. The y value of the line is 5 when x is equal to 1. The corresponding y value of the line for the first data point is therefore 5. The second data point has an x value of 1.5. We therefore set x equal to 1.5 in the equation. We see that the estimated value of y for the second data point is 6. Next, we set x equal to 3 and calculate the estimated value to 9. The corresponding estimated value for the last data point, which is an x value of 3.5, is 10. We have now calculated all the estimated values according to our regression line. Once we have estimated the values according to the line, it is easy to calculate the vertical distance between the data point and the line. We simply subtract the estimated y value according to the regression line from the y value of the data point, which is equal to negative 3. The distance between the first data point and the line is therefore 3. Next, we calculate the distance between the second data point and the line, which is 5 minus 6. Note that we here change the index from 1 to 2, since this is the second data point. Also, note that we use the letter y for the y value of the observed data, and y hat for the estimated y value according to the line. The difference between the observed and estimated y value for the third data point is negative 3.5 and the difference between observed and estimated value for the last data point is negative 1.5. Next, 
we square these differences, which makes sure that all the values become positive. These are the square differences. For example, the square of negative 3 is 9, and the square of negative 1 is 1. Next, we sum these square differences, which is called the sum of squared residuals or the sum of squared errors, SSE. The sum of the squared errors is equal to 24.5. The equation for the sum of squared errors looks like this, where we sum the squared differences between observed values and the estimated values according to the line. Let's create a plot where we put the sum of the squared errors on the y-axis and the value of the intercept for the line on the x-axis. According to our calculations for a line with an intercept of 3 and a slope of 2, the sum of the squared errors is 24.5. The intercept of our current line is 3, which results in a sum of squared error of 24.5. Now, let's reduce the intercept of the line from 3 to 2 in order to see if we get a better fit. We calculate the estimated values according to the line. Note that the second observation is now on the line, which means that the estimated value according to the line is equal to the observed value. Next we calculate the residuals or errors, which is the distance between the line and the data points. As before, this is calculated by subtracting the estimated y value from the observed y value. Next we square these errors. Finally, we sum the squared errors and plot the sum of the squared error by a point which tells us that if the line has an intercept of 2, the sum of the squared errors is 10.5. If the line has an intercept of 2 instead of 3, the sum of the squared residuals is therefore much lower, which tells us that a line with an intercept of 2 fits much better to the data than a line with an intercept of 3. Now, let's reduce the intercept of the line from 2 to 0 0.75. We calculate the estimated y values, the errors, the squared errors, and finally the sum of the squared errors, which is 4.25. After adding the point to our plot, we see that out of the three different intercepts of the line we have tested so far, the one with an intercept of 0 0.75 results in the least sum of squared errors. Let's continue to reduce the intercept and see what happens with the sum of the squared errors. In this case, we set the intercept to negative 0 0.5. The sum of the squared errors is now 10.5. Therefore, an intercept of negative 0 0.5 results in the same sum of squared errors as if the intercept is 2. Let's set the intercept to negative 1.5. The sum of the squared errors for this line is 24.5. If you study how the sum of the squared errors changes as a function of different values of the intercept, we see that the value that minimizes the sum of the squared errors is 0 0.75. This is why the following line is considered as the best fit for this dataset. Also, this is the reason why the method is called least squares, because we seek the values of the parameters that result in the least sum of squared errors. Note that we have kept the slope of the line constant because it simplifies the visualization of the sum of squared errors. However, we can do the same analysis by instead changing the slope. Normally, we use a software to find the intercept and slope that generate a line that results in the lowest sum of squared errors. For this particular data, an intercept of 0 0.75 and a slope of 2 results in the best fit. However, for linear regression, it is also possible to use the following equation to find the slope of the regression line where the numerator is the sample covariance of x and y, and the denominator is the sample variance of x. 
if you log in the equations for the sample covariance and the sample variance, we see that we can cancel n minus 1 from the equation. We can therefore estimate the slope by the following equation. To estimate the slope, we first calculate the mean of the x values, and then the mean of the y values. Then we plug in the observed values and the mean of x and y in the equation. For example, this part of the calculation is the difference between the x value of the first observation and the mean of x, whereas this part is the difference between the y value of the first observation and the mean of y. This is the corresponding calculation for the second observation, and so forth. If we calculate all this, the slope is estimated to 2. Once we have worked out the slope, we can calculate the intercept with the following equation. If we begin the mean of y, the slope, and the mean of x, we see that the intercept is equal to 0 0.75. The line that fits best to the data is therefore a line with an intercept of 0 0.75 and a slope of 2, because this line results in the lowest possible sum of squared errors. This was the end of this lecture about the method of least squares. Thanks for watching.